Hey y'all, welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today I am participating in a What Would You Make challenge for August. And this is one where we have um, all, well, all of our projects have to incorporate wood in some way. So we have the guest host is Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots, Brenda from Rustic and Lace, and uh, Christine from Divine Designs are our hosts. So I am the first project is um, I did like a fall truck um, with um, scarecrows and, and whatnot in the back of it. So um, I started this project on one of our craft getaways and didn't finish it. So I decided to finish it up since we're rolling into fall. And so I added it to this video. And I went through two or three different um, paints on this when I was doing it, trying to get the right color that I wanted. Um, I've got this color change um, paint. It's a aqua. I don't remember. I think it's aqua flash or teal flash or something of that nature. Um, originally I started out with just it, but it's more of a translucent color. So then I went and painted, um, the, the truck white and then tried a couple coats of that and it still didn't come out with the color I wanted. So I took the agave by Waverly and did a couple coats on of it. And then I put that trans, the color shift paint on there and finally got the color I was looking for. So I did the, um, I painted both sides of both of my truck pieces uh, with this paint combination. And I took and painted the, you know, the tires in black and painted the rails with I don't remember what color I did the rails with, actually. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> my allergies have been kicking my butt. But as you can see, you know, I'm just taking and get, putting that color shift on there. And I know you can't really see the difference in the paint too much. Um, but it really added a really neat shimmery color shift look to it when the light hits it just right. But if you know, uh, if you've been on my channel much, then you know that I'm a sucker for the trucks. My dad used to restore old trucks. So, um, I do a lot of truck projects. I try to not do all truck projects but I do do a lot of truck projects. So this is one of them. And I'm just going to let you watch the process a little bit. Um, also with the, the collaboration, I will have the playlist in my description box and the links for each of the hosts channels in the description box as well. Go, uh, head over to, after you get done watching mine, head over to their uh, channels or hit the playlist and let them know that you came over from my channel. Uh, share a little bit of love, give them some likes, some shares, comments, subscribe. Um, all of you that are have subscribed to my channel, I truly appreciate your support. And any of you that are coming over from their playlists, um, I invite you to like, comment, subscribe, share, and it all any any of those uh, things helps our channels grow. I happen to have had kind of a little bit of a 
rough, busy week. So, unfortunately, my video is late to the playlist. Um, it posted a couple hours ago, and I'm still trying to get it finished up. But I had stuff I had to take care of. So, um, I'm just glad that I'm able to get a video done to add to it, even if it is a little bit late. We've got a playlist um, full of some amazing creators. Um, very friendly, very supportive, very talented. And I really enjoy being able to do these playlists and interact with other creators um, and learn from them. Uh, you know, they're very, um, very supportive, very helpful. Uh, if you have questions, any of them are um, really great about jumping in and answering the questions and helping you out. So being able to be part of these playlists are, it is really, it's really a cool thing. Um, but enough said about that for now. As you can see, I, um, I took a couple of a few tumbling tower blocks and some uh, jumbo popsicle sticks and formed the back of the bed of the truck. And that's where um, the hay and the pumpkins and the scarecrows are going to sit. And I'm not sure what I was doing there. And as you can see, I used um, quite a few tumbling tower blocks just to give some good support to the back of that. And I'm just going to kind of let you watch the process. I'm struggling for words today. It's kind of been a, a hectic week, and I'm worn out after cleaning out my uh, craft storage shed today. I had to organize it so that I could move the stuff that's in the other cabin into it, because um, a friend of mine's getting ready to move in to the cabin for a short bit. So I had some help today, and had to had to take advantage of having help today and get it done today so that I did but it wore me out in the heat and I haven't been feeling well so now I'm on the let's get this video done and trying to do a voiceover and I'm out of words go figure And I thought I cut that part out. As you can see, I was uh, distracted while I was editing as well. My phone wouldn't quit ringing. Between my kids and my nephew, I got several phone calls. So I took um, some of the Waverly Antique Wax and used it on the tailgate for the I guess it's the yeah, tailgate. But I'm out of frame while I'm doing it. Go figure. This was during uh, some of our craft weekends. And I had just... That's when I started actually filming as I was crafting. With the intention of being able to, to start uploading videos on YouTube. So, um, it's one of those things where kind of the, the beginning stuff <laughs> and you learn as you go, you find other, you know, better angles and stuff as you go. 
I took and reinforced um, the with some of the super glue. <clears throat> I just reinforced all of the where I've got everything connected. For some reason, if I recall correctly, when I first put the truck together, um, as I was trying to do add something to it or whatever, it had fallen apart and I had to glue it back together. Uh, the hot glue just didn't seem to want to hold it, so I wanted to make sure it was good and secure. I just put um, a hay bale in the back and then took some floral foam, stuck it down in there and put some uh, Spanish moss for my little scarecrow couple to sit on. I might end up going back and doing something with the front of the truck. Because it's open, I may, you know, go and do something to cover and complete it. Or it might, as I'm thinking about it, it would be cute to put like a little um, potted plant or something in there. Just set it down in there as, as part of the display. I don't know. I'll figure it out. These scarecrows, they're cute, but they don't want to stay put. We previously had these on a wreath, on a hay bale on a wreath, and they kept falling off. It drove me crazy. Um, we finally just took them off. I was like, I'm, I'm done trying to glue it on there and make them stay. <laughs> so, it looks like I might have a little bit of the same battle with them on here, too. Because the, they're top-heavy. Um, so, they, they keep wanting to fall over. They don't like to sit very well. I think I finally got it to stay. And then I didn't put the pumpkins in there at that point. I did that off camera because I couldn't find them. And then I found them earlier today and stuck them on there um, to take the picture. So DIY number two, everybody's doing these um, busted canvases. And I thought, I think they're so cute. So... I decided to try my hand at one myself. I had taken um, and went into Canva and created a design with um, some Highland cows with a barn in the background and some fall leaves and, and whatnot. And I'm taking... Now, I've got two canvas pieces that, um, that I'll be working with. One is a flat canvas. The other one is a stretched canvas. And um, so I just Mod Podged and put the... Um, gosh, so sorry, y'all. I'm just totally, I, I think I've just had too much stimulation today. Anyway, I'm mod podging the, um, the print on there on the flat canvas. Because that's the one that's going to go behind. I just took in and put a semi-generous coat of Mod Podge on there because as you know the can canvases have like that <clears throat> that texture on there and then I'm using regular printer paper which is thicker than tissue paper <laughs> pardon me and then I set that aside to dry and I thought I had sized those correctly but evidently I didn't but it's okay because um, as you can see 
the inside of the, the canvas, um, the inside the frame part of it, it's um, a smaller section. So you won't see that that the um, image isn't fully on the, the flat canvas. So this one I took and I put um, this on there. It's just a kind of fall color squirrel thing. And it, the paper wrinkled on me on this one. The other one, I didn't have any issues with the paper wrinkling, but this one I did. But once it dried, the wrinkles kind of went away. So that's good. I wasn't stressing the wrinkles too awfully bad because that's the part of the canvas that you're going to cut and, and, and whirl. So, um, I knew that the, the wrinkles in there wouldn't show as, as bad. And then this is the print that I'm putting on the inside of the canvas. I'm trying to get it sized and I failed at that too. Didn't get it sized properly. But I did, did make it work. So there is that. I thought that leaf print was really pretty. As you can see, I'm trying to snip it, you know, where I need to cut and whatnot so that I can get it in there. And what do you know? Cut it too short. But that's okay. Took one of the scraps that I cut off of it and put it in there. And I made it work. I'm mod podging that one in as well. <clears throat> Oi. The sinus drainage is definitely getting to me. Had to fight with the new kitten right there. He's, uh, he's a bit mischievous. Right now he's laying on his back with his feet folded, you know, in the cutest little position right next to me on the chair. He likes to get mischievous when I'm in the middle of something. And then he'll lay down and sleep when I'm not. But he's so cute. He's a little silver tabby. And he's just adorable. And soft and cuddly. <laughs> and he's a cuddle bug. He loves to cuddle. <clears throat> he's probably part of the reason my allergies are acting up. Because I am slightly allergic to cats. But I love him. He's so sweet. There's just something about kitty cats when they want to curl up and get all cuddly and lovey. So. When I was growing up, I couldn't even walk into a house that had a cat in it. I'd walk into a house and, you know, anybody who had cats, I'd walk in the house and my eyes would immediately start itching and swell shut. Come to find out, but it was because I was a walking allergy my entire life, or my entire childhood. I was born and raised in Nevada, and I was allergic to sagebrush, cottonwood trees, hay, horses, and I was surrounded by all of it. So, now that I'm not in surrounded by other allergens, I can actually have a cute, cuddly little kitty cat. As long as I don't touch my face after I pet him. As long as he doesn't get up in my face. <laughs> so I took in, um, 
after uh, I got the others in there and gave that a chance to dry, I put a top coat of Mod Podge on it and set it aside to, to dry. Um, my kids wanted to go out to dinner, so I figured Mod Podge all of that, let it sit and dry, and then come back and finish it up. So that's what I did. So I took um, the pumpkin by Waverly and went around the edges of the canvas with it so that it wasn't like that stark white sticking out there after, you know, the color and, and whatnot from the paper. Just took that, um, I did all the way around the, all four edges, um, and I used some Waverly antique wax to kind of, um, dirty it up and hone it, hone that orange down a little bit, rustic it up, as we like to say sometimes. Lord, I thought I cut some of this out too. This is what happens when I'm worn out and distracted and interrupted when I'm trying to edit videos. I miss a lot of stuff that I could have taken out. I could have showed me painting just a little bit of this instead of the whole thing. Such is life, right? Here's where I take the antique wax and just kind of go around the edges. Distress it a little bit. You can't really see on camera much of a difference in there, but it did make a difference. And as I was sitting here, you know, doing that, I had put the paper on the front and everything and had and trimmed it back, and I was like, I didn't like that. So you can see the kitten there a little bit in the corner. Um, but I didn't didn't like that it had, like, that edge around it for the paper. Um... I did find a workaround for that, as you'll see here shortly. And of course, I ended up with paint all over my fingers. So here's where I'm putting a hole in the canvas, and I used my um, X-Acto knife to start doing some of the, the slits there. And this can really be done um, anyway. I saw other creators not necessarily go from the middle with triangular. I've seen them go from the, the middle with just, you know, general slashes and whatnot. Um, so you could... Oh. You could play with it and kind of make it your own as you're doing it. <clears throat> and then I took the scissors and continued the cut. Um, cut it to the, the very edge of the, the wood frame there. And grabbed a pencil and used it to help curl it up. Now, I got these, um, these canvases at Dollar General, and I think the canvas on this is actually a little bit thicker than the canvas on the ones um, from Dollar Tree. But once I got them all curled up with the pencil, I took some hot glue and tacked them down. Just put a little uh, dab of hot glue on the on the curled end and tacked it down to the canvas
think it's about time to replace my, uh, I used one of those Dollar Tree, um, cutting mats as a, uh, protector when I'm working on, uh, when I'm working on this, uh, on stuff, because I use my, I've got like a lap table for a laptop. My laptop is actually underneath that little, uh, plastic sheet there. <laughs> I've tried washing it and a lot of that paint doesn't want to come off. Looks like it's about time for break out a, a new one, especially since, uh, I was cutting fabric and I don't know why. I guess I thought it's a cutting mat. It should be okay with the rotary cutter. I cut a slit or two in it by accident. So it was one of those things of, uh, might be time to replace it. Start out with a fresh mat. So after I got those all curled up in there, um, I realized I was like, oof, I don't like the, how the wood frame looks. So I went through and used antique wax, um, to kind of stain the, the wood, the wood frame that the canvas is stretched on. And honestly, I don't know if this one really truly counts as, as a, wood so much um you know the frame that the canvas is stretched on is wood but i also used a little wooden mushroom from um dollar tree as well in there so maybe it'll fly i hope so and here's where I work on getting that lined up and glued down to the to the flat canvas there. And that was fun. I should have um, I didn't get it on there as straight as I could. I thought that the way I did it was going to be the best way to get it on there straight. And it didn't work out. I didn't get it as straight as I would have liked. But that's okay. I went in and also painted um, the edges of that one with the, the pumpkin by Waverly as well. So that we didn't have that stark white popping around there. I didn't paint the back of it. I probably should have, but I didn't. Now this, um, see, see the design in there. And then I realized, um, as I was, maybe I didn't realize it yet, that you could still see some of the wood frame where I curled the, the things up. So I had to go back in and touch that up with the, um, Waverly wax too. But here I'm taking and just getting around the edges there. So that it kind of blends in. And then I took in, um, well, maybe not yet. Anyway, while I'm painting that, I'd like to invite y'all to follow us on our social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and we have our own um, social group on our webpage as well for craft, uh, crafting, sharing ideas, um, all that good stuff. So here I took some twine, and I'll leave the links for all of that in the description box as well. So here I took some twine. And went around that edge where the paper was. And then I also took twine around where the two canvases meet. Because 
from where it's tucked on the corners of the um, stretched canvas, it left a little bit of gapping between the two. So um, I put some twine around there too. And here I am um, putting some Spanish moss in there. Because I wanted to have a little bit more of a three-dimensional look in there. So I took in and put some of the Spanish moss in there and then pulled one of these little mushrooms, these wooden mushrooms from Dollar Tree. I painted the stem with the antique wax and then painted the, um, the top of it with crimson by Waverly and then put little white dots on the top of it. I was kind of had, I was in the mood to add a, some mushroom stuff. Now, if I had done this with a bigger canvas, I would have had more room to, to add some stuff in there. But, um, I used five by seven canvases for this one. So it's a smaller one and it's one that would fit on a tiered tray. Now, if you decide to make this and you want to put it on a tiered tray, um, it will kind of stand up on its own or you could prop it up against the, um, the stand in the middle of the tray. Or you can take and put some tum tumbling tower blocks on the back bottom to help give it some stability. There's options there to help it stand. Or if you want to hang it, you could put a hanger on the back of it. I just used the back end of a paintbrush to, to put the little dots on my mushroom. And I was like, well, I didn't think that out too well. Because I didn't have anywhere I could set the mushroom down while I got the other stuff, uh, got closed the lid and all that. And I, I was fighting with that, that lid trying to get it on there. It didn't, for some reason, my white, the lid never will go on straight. It drives me crazy. I, I took and glued the little mushroom in over there. And then I've got some little pumpkins here. I grabbed one of those and put those in the other, on the opposite side. As it's bouncing out at me. Trying to get it secured in there. Ouch. Oh, now the kitten's woke up and he's decided I'm a chew toy. He's decided I'm a chew toy. And then I took um, a couple of the little bittersweet blooms, a yellow one and an orange one, and kind of tucked it in there. And there we have it done. Kind of a sucker for the Highland cows, too. I think they're just the cutest thing. All right, so now this project. I saw this. I saw another YouTuber do this um, two or three years ago. And I thought I saved the link to the video. I went back and looked through every saved link that I have ever saved trying to find this. So that I could give credit to the original um one that I saw do it, and I cannot find the video anywhere. <clears throat> and Lord only knows what keywords would pull it up. Because um, the key, uh, doorknobs, apples, none of that stuff, I couldn't, it, I couldn't find it. Um, if I ever do run across it, I will definitely go put the link in the description box. But this was not my original idea. I was inspired by another YouTuber. Um, at least for the concept of the doorknob part, I of course made it my own, um, with the way that I put it on the palette and, and all of that. Cause I, the other, 
the original one that did this, um, I think put it like on a round disc or something, a wood slice. I'm not sure. I don't even remember. Um, yeah, that was a dodo moment there. So because the doorknob doesn't want to sit flush on that, um, I decided not to try to glue it down. I went, uh, decided zip ties would be better to run through and just zip tie it on there. So that's what I did. But I was just having so much fun trying to line those up in there. I, uh, the first attempt, I did not put the zip tie around the, the thing where it would hold it. It just went through the hole. I was like, oh, that was a smart move there. Let's try again. But anyway, I just took and um, did the, the two zip ties on either side of it, secured it down nice and tight, and then clipped the, um, clipped the little leftovers off. My scissors did not want to cut that. I was looking for something else and couldn't find it without getting up. So I was like, all right, let's try it again. Got it to work. So I used the, the Waverly um, Crimson to paint the doorknob. And now I'm um, putting some Mod Podge on there to not only help seal it, but, you know, apples are not a flat chalk finish. They've, they've got a nice sheen to them. So I wanted to make sure that, um, that it had a sheen to it. So that's... Um, that was the primary reason I put the Mod Podge on there. I find that the Waverly chalk paint will stick to metal and glass and plastic and stuff better than a typical acrylic paint. But it doesn't hurt to have it sealed a little bit too. So I went out in my yard and grabbed a stick and cut it down, and I think I still need to cut it down some more. It's a little bit longer than I like. And I took a, um, clipped a little piece of a leaf off from one of my flower picks and kind of wrapped it around the bottom of that stick and tacked it with glue and then glued the stick with the leaf in the hole of the doorknob. And then... I've got um, the Spanish moss to cover up the, the bottom part of the, the doorknob. And while I was putting the Spanish moss on there, I was kicking myself. I was like, I should have painted this uh, brown or or something so that the gold didn't show through the Spanish moss as much. <laughs> so I had to really make sure I had some good coverage with that Spanish moss to cover up any of the the material. Uh, metal peeking through on the from the doorknob yeah when I saw that other creator do that I was like that is adorable that is genius I need to try that and could not find the right type of you know doorknob um, laying around I wasn't going to go buy a doorknob set just for the sake of doing this. So when I got all the other craft supplies, um, our friend uh, that I got those craft supplies from, they had had to change all the doorknobs in the house and had a basket full of doorknobs. I was like, what are you doing with those? Throwing them away? Can I have them? Why? I said, because I've got a craft project with those. <laughs> so... There you go. Anyway, we are at the final reveal here, and um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, thumbs up, um, comment, share, all that good stuff. And thanks for watching. <laughs>